You know what that sound is? That's the sound of a newborn baby crying, a.k.a. the Duck Hunting Refuge Forum. <laughs> All right, guys, that's enough. That's enough. So we just dropped a video. we we'll do a little recap on it. Going to call Kevin here in a little bit. I guess the Refuge Forums are crying their eyes out. And uh, as usual, you know, we don't say location. We don't show location. It's if you know, you know, which is, what, 1% out of 100% that would ever recognize anywhere we go. If not, maybe a little more. That's okay. And even if you do, guess what? It's probably been weeks before the hunt took place. So feel free to go hunt there. Feel free. <laughs> By all means, go find that spot and kill the same amount of birds. Because guess what? It's going to be a lot different in two and three weeks from when we were there. So <clears throat> here's the thing. Cry when you go to Idaho. Cry when you go to Washington. Cry when you hunt in your own home state. Cry when you hunt in the refuges. Cry when you, you know. Why are duck hunters in general such crybabies? I've grown up in big game hunting, deer hunting, all this stuff. I, I know. It's it's humans in general, but it just, I feel like, I could be wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like duck hunters, not all of them, obviously, but a big majority are the biggest cry babies in the world. And guys that cannot be happy for other people. I know there's tons of, there's more good duck hunters out there than bad, but it's like, my goodness, my goodness. It's disappointing. Come on, guys. We can do better than that. We can make this better. We're not helping ourselves by tearing each other down in a community that's already being completely attacked, meaning the hunting community in general. But we tear ourselves down. Mind-blowing to me. And you know you say, oh, don't waste your time, don't waste your energy. I'm not. This is my platform to speak freely. So that's why I have this, because I can say whatever I want. I'm not going to waste my efforts and energy saying comments and saying stuff back to people or going to those forums and having little keyboard wars. I don't, that is not what I'm about, and I ain't going to waste my time. But <clears throat> I'm just voicing how I feel. It's like, my goodness, guys, come on. Like, I, I can look back at stuff and say, oh, that was cringy, and yeah, maybe I shouldn't respond that way, or I shouldn't have did this or that, and you grow and you learn. But, like, if you want to go watch this video and we're, that we're going to recap, which is episode five on Mid Valley Mercenaries channel, go watch it. There ain't nothing in it. Just like always, there's nothing unethical. There's not a lot of, ah, woo, woo, ah, acting stupid. Like, okay, if you get excited, you get excited, but there's no acting like an idiot. There's no just doing stupid stuff. It's just clean hunting, you know? So anyways, that rant is over. Let's talk about the people that help this show, the MVM show. MVM show. And first off, I'd like to talk about Motion Ducks. Yes, people, Motion Ducks is working with us again. Ben from Motion Ducks reached out to me and said, hey, let's work to do some more work together. And I was like, sure, man, sounds good to me. So <clears throat> what Ben did is he created a web a page on his website that you guys can go check out, and it's for Motion Ducks. You guys say, who's Ben? Well, Ben is the owner of Motion Ducks. We've been using it for four years at least, maybe five. I think it's been about four now. It's one of the best jerk rig, motion jerk rig setups I've ever used. There's several out there. By far, this trumps them because you can put up to four to seven to uh, what it would be, seven, ten, ten. I mean, you can make these massive setups to where you're pulling it and making motion when there's no wind. So go check out this site. It's motionducks.com forward slash MVM. That's Mike, Victor Mike, using the old military alphabet. So, but what's cool about this is. Not only did he make this site, and it's set up really nicely, actually, and a word from myself on there, 
But he also gave a code to get another 10% off. So not only did he already give a discount on the jerk rig spread setup that's on there, he, he dropped it like 15 bucks. Then he gave a code MVM10 to put in there for you guys, the listeners, to get an additional 10% off, and you get a free anchor bag. So <clears throat> if you've been thinking about getting this, this is definitely the best deal you're going to find out there right now as far as anyone else with a code or anything. Like, he set this up pretty sweet, if, if you don't mind me saying. And I am a massive, huge believer in motion decks. So anyways, guys, go check that out. Uh, and support him. If you need one, if you want to add a motion to your spread, by all means, please go check that out. And it's the best deal you're going to find around, and it's the best rig setup. And you know I don't say stuff unless I use it myself. I will not do that. So you can take my word for it. I'm not a sellout. All right. Next is, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I'm getting this cough. Miller Outdoor Adventures. And you've been hearing about this one a little bit if you've been listening to the last several episodes. It is located in northeast Arkansas on the Cache River. Rice and bean, flooded rice and bean field hunts for duck and snow goose conservation. So they do both. You can get guided or unguided hunts. And it's $500 a day for an unguided hunt. But the cool thing is you can take out eight buddies if you want. Ends up being like $62.50 a day. Let me tell you another bonus. If you mention the MVM show... He said he will give you an additional $50 off a day, and it might actually be a place that we go out with the group. I don't know about this year, but maybe next year. It sounds like it'd be a good time. Check his site out, MillerOutdoorAdventures.com, or you can call and text him at 870-586-3004. Don't forget to mention the MVM show, and really, I would try to snatch up some of those conservation goose hunts. Um, You know how that can get nasty in the wintertime, man, and get get all those birds and those high limits and just be a blast. So check them out. It's great, great guy, great business. All right. Without further ado, we are going to bring Kevin on. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the strategies from that uh, episode five of the hunt that dropped on Sunday. You're listening to this on Wednesday. So I'm going to give him a call. Come on, Kevin, come on. Ruh -ruh. What up? Hey. <laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just telling everybody on the show here about, you know, episode five of the hunt that we were with you, me and Thomas. We had the boats out there. You're driving the mm -hmm. pro drive, and I'm out in the gator tail, and we're just having a st stinking good time is what we're doing. So I kind of wanted to – Cutting it up, just – a little shredding out in the water. Shredding the gnar. <laughs> shredding the gnar gnar. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to bring up to uh, and see what you had to say about the decoy step that you had done. We had our final approach, um, live flocked head mallards out there, and then you had uh, your avian X's out there. And so I don't know if we had, what, maybe about four or five dozen decoys out there and a bunch of pulsators. Right. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and sounds right. Explain to me, like, <clears throat> you you know, we're in California. I know it's different, and you've hunted other states and stuff, but what is your thought process on setting up your decoys? Is it kind of a trial and error deal? Because I noticed that you kept them kind of tucked in tight, or is it just, I mean, I guess it's experience speaking, right? Yeah. I think it's probably a bit of both or mm -hmm. of multiple things, right? I just kind of try to set them out as I've seen them before, I guess, you know, or what mm -hmm. I think looks real to me and mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't know if there's a real science to it. I just try to make, try to make it look organic as possible. Really? Yeah. Right. All right. And that's really it. Yeah. Because you scout birds and you're looking at birds and you can see what they set up and you just make that, what you kind of take that mental picture and try to emulate that. That's exactly it. I've said that to you before, right? It's that mental picture. I try to take wherever I'm at. Um, and just kind of set it up the same way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and every, I think every, every good duck hunter, um, I mean, you, you know, and you set it up in the morning, but you sell birds work and mm -hmm. you're, I think, shoot, at least seven or at least half the time. I know myself, I'm a little eccentric, I guess, but I, you know, you end up moving those decoys a few times, mm -hmm. tweaking them, 
a bit for mm-hmm. sure. You know, there's hardly ever a time when I just, and I don't just move them to move them. You know, you're just kind of watching. Maybe you're thinking you could do things a little better. So, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's like, you can't really it. know until the birds start flying. Like maybe that setup's worked before, but maybe it doesn't work this time. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like, you got a good idea, obviously, mm-hmm. especially if you're in, your, you know, shooting places you've shot before, but yeah, you're always going to make tweaks because you always get those, some birds to do it this way. And then some that maybe don't, you always take that into account too. Like, you know, all these birds are kind of different and how they feel, what, what they've just had, they've been just been shot at prior. Maybe they're a little more on edge, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but you always, right. You always go in with your, with your picture and then you just make adjustments as needed, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, that's kind of my game. That's kind of my game plan, you know. I kind of pulled away. Me and Harrison have done podcasts on this, and we've talked about a lot about this for the last couple of years. About he's even he was before I even met you. Me and him were talking about how tucking him up against the toolies a little bit, almost semi hidden, and then me and you were talking about the exact same thing. And I think probably a lot of California hunters, um, probably, you know, I don't know the the numbers whatever maybe a lot don't but kind of do that if they really pay attention how birds act and do you know um uh-huh. if you're really really uh-huh. i don't want to say dialed because i'm not trying to sound like we're better than other people but i think if you're very observant there's the word i'm looking for if there you're you very go. observant of how birds work you're gonna know okay something this is not fully working and then you brought up the point as me and harrison had talked about it but you said hey I don't always want them to see the decoys. I want them to make a turn and, okay, where are they at now? And they're looking. But if they can keep eyes on the whole time they're doing their little circle and they're working, they might pick things apart and say, nah, I'm out of here. You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make them work for it. Yeah. Right? That's, that's, that's what I say. Make, make them work for it. You know, yeah. these birds see, you know, everything. They're running the gauntlet, right, from yeah. Canada. Yeah. So, you know, and people – so I just try to, I just try to make them, make them work for it. Come take a look. They got to find them. They got to get in closer. And by that time, hopefully they're dead. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it was, and it's just years of experience, right? right? Just what I, you know, and everything, different things work for other people. That's just what I do. You know? Right. I'm kind of tweaky when it comes to that stuff. Uh, it may make a difference. It may not, but it works for me. You know? Yeah, totally. And, um, I I mean, you know, when before you actually hunt with somebody like we, we hunted with you, I mean, we met a few times. We've talked a ton, you know, over the last year. But then we've met in person before the hunt and then we hunt together and then we've hunted again. And so it's like, well, you know, you don't know until you hunt with somebody. Like when you're saying you're tweaky or you, you got these little things and some people call you crazy or whatever. I'm like, man, I don't really I don't you're hardcore. A hundred percent, but like I'm like, well, I don't think you're no more crazy than we are, you know. Like, yeah, we're just yeah. like you've said before, cut from the same cloth, you know. Obviously, right. you yeah, have more. Some t- maybe, yeah, but but yeah, you guys are you guys are right there. So mm-hmm. it's we're just it's not kind of the same. We're yeah. not a experience as experienced, obviously, but we're like, hey, I mean, we pay attention. We got to do what works, and and then it's great hunt with you because we're learning like. Things that are above our pay grade, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're like, okay, yeah. you walk this road way longer and have been hardcore way longer. Meaning, I've, you know, there, we've talked about this like advancements being made in the last two, you know, couple, two, three years with us, and really what it is is just hunting more than you did yeah. before. Maybe like now I'm, I'm basically hunt four times as much, five times as much as I used to. And I thought back then I hunted, you know, oh, wow, I mean, I did 12 hunts this year. It's like, that's not even a scratch in the, I mean, that just is crazy that I even thought that yeah. was much. That would be a killer off season thinking I only went out 12 times. <laughs> Wouldn't that just destroy your soul now? Oh, my like, God. I didn't even hunt, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There would have to be some drastic stuff, but yeah, you know, we're well past that now. Yeah. You know, we've got our families, we've got our niche. We could, we could certainly spend that time, but everybody's in a different, different phase. Right. Mm-hmm. And we've all been there. Yeah. 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 All I've got on you guys is time, you know, yeah. all I've got on you guys is time. And, the, just and been out you, there doing it longer. 
And we can't buy that though. I mean, you you no, no, paid you your dues, do it. you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's all I got. I I got I got a twelve year or ten year at least head start on you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. What? So what do you That's think, it. like weather wise in general? I mean, I, I okay. We had we didn't have much of a breeze on that hunt. Maybe five or six. Maybe you think I don't even know if that. But it was yeah. sunny and it was clear and it just seemed to, um just seemed to work yeah honestly. it yeah it just works it just works i mean i think most duck hunters you know would take would rather take the sun and stuff like that than uh than cloudy days you know i do i don't know though like i that's what i would take i'd take the cold clear and windy me thomas travis talk about all the time that's what we would pick yeah. but like when i think Maybe for our style. Our, maybe you that's know, the what style it is. of stuff we do. That's you know, maybe it's style. Um, do you think it's almost kind of mallard dependent? Like, do you think maybe that's why we're brain not that we won't kill and shoot other birds because you said you're not greenhead greed at all, and neither are we. I love hunting mallards, but like, yeah, I feel I'm like that's teams. the combo that you need for mallards more so, oh, yeah. right? I mean, you can, you, right? Yeah, you can get them in, in any weather, right? But I mean. To me, my best success has been give me clear blue. Mm -hmm. Give me clear blue. Yeah. You can get them in any – I mean, you see it on IG all the time, right? People are shooting yep. shooting mallards. And it's great or this and that. Absolutely. You can get it done. Um, I just I just prefer that Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's, that's what makes me feel good. Like when I'm going, I'm like, okay, all right, here we go. This could be a good day. Yeah. You know? And the bennies of it, though – People got to think about it, and I, because I hear, I do hear a lot of people talking about, oh, good, it's great, you know, it's overcast. And I'm like, oh man, we're gonna be seen from ten buck too, because we don't have those shadows, and that's why I love those sunny days too, is because man, you can just stand by the edge of the tulies at the right angle, and you're, I mean, you don't, they don't see. It. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Like you've heard me say it. Like when you get these cloudy days, or for any duck or goose, I mean, they got the sunglasses on, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that's helping them when it's sunny. It's yeah. helping us. So yeah. um, those sunglass days for them are just, I mean, it's, yeah, it's better. You know, the cards are more in their favor. And, you know, this is what I say about California too. I mean, they, when they get here, man, it's, they've seen it all, mm -hmm. you know, um, just shoot, not even to California, just getting in the Valley, I guess. I mean, I mean, they get hit hard, even if they were born and raised here. So mm -hmm. um, I just try to get those days that are favorable, more favorable to myself. You know, yeah. what favors me rather than them. And to me, it's the sunny days. Yeah, to make the most of your, your, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can get it done in any weather, mm -hmm. but yeah, the sunny, you know, sunny days, that's when got more cards in my hand. Yeah. To play yeah. With, so, that's okay. It. Well, I didn't want to, I wouldn't want to keep you too long, but I just kind of wanted you to jump on here and give us a little wisdom. Yeah. Always pulling some little, nuggets. Little perspective. Yeah. Yeah, some little nugs. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, man, I, I, I mean, appreciate it. I, I'll let you go. I know you're busy, so I'll, I'll let you bounce off here. But thanks for coming on real quick. No, appreciate the invite, man. Love talking. It was a, it was a fantastic hunt. Glad yeah. you guys could enjoy that with me. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll have to talk more yeah. about it. I mean, there's more we could talk about, but I don't want to hold you too long. I know you're busy, so. Oh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I mean, if you got some more. Um, I got I got some time. Yeah. If, okay. Well, one of the, one of the other things we did too. So I guess I'll just keep talking then, since you're you're not too bad. Yeah, yet, I but, got so, I, I got I got some time. What's yeah, up? just let me know whenever you gotta jump off. But like the pulsators too, that was a factor because it's early right now, so we don't want to. You can't use spinner wings, and you you know. But we use you know you'd use those like I don't know what time it was you turn those on, but what you were doing basically is conserving battery and. And it worked both ways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I got, you know, I mean, I try to get it. I try to u utilize those things when it's going to be most effective. Mm. Right. Um, and, and yeah, part of it is a battery life. If I think I'm, I may be out there a little while, you know, you want to, you want those things hopping and popping while you're in the heart of <clears throat> some duck hunting, you yeah. know, the, the sea at times. So, I try to lay off all that stuff until I really need them, mm -hmm. you know, cause typically you got, you know, your birds are going to be most active and just kind of willing to give it up a little early without really anything. Right. You know, because, so try to just what take is that, advantage. Kevin? 
Why do you think that What's, is? Um, maybe they haven't. You know, I mean, they haven't had the blaze yet of of all these of hunting. You know, they're just waking up. Maybe they're just getting around and about. I'm not sure. I just know it's. You know, I could use that stuff, but to me, it just seems more affected to use late when gotcha. you've got birds really maybe wanting to look and and get in. Yeah. You know, like they're like, you want to come and sit down and now they see that spread and they see that motion, which we all know, I mean, as a duck hunter, motion is, is key, yeah. right? I yeah. mean, you know, everybody's looking for a wind or something, you know, that's why we have all these gadgets to manufacture what yeah. we can, you know? So, um, I just think, you know, when I need it the most, these birds are looking to sit down and, and maybe going to pick apart something well that's when i wanted to look most real yeah i guess yeah, yeah. that's my theory you know yeah. i mean Something and it work. worked you know it you worked. got good sun you know let's say it's a sunny day right so so everything is just really poppy right really popping they could see that splash in the water um mm-hmm. so whereas whereas just, with that low light they're not really going to see that as much y- yeah exactly Exactly. Yeah. That's that's kind of my theory. You know, just try to, if I can, I mean, if I knew those batteries would last, and I'm not usually out there super long, but, right. you know, I could, I totally just want to conserve it as much as I can because I think it's better served later than early, mm-hmm. personally. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Would you agree? No, I, totally, man. I mean, like, why waste? Because if the sun's not really up way up yet and it's not creating that sun on that then why waste that because it's like you said just like spinner wings too it's not going to create that pop so i mean you it's like you said it's not that you couldn't turn them on and it work but it's like why not maximize you're just it's just a strategic move dude and that's the thing it seems like such a small little pet little small little pet peeve uh thing people are like oh man you're really just over the top of it and i think maybe that's where you get the Hey, you're you're crazy. Like you're overthinking it. It's like no, I don't feel like a duck hunter can ever overthink it. To be honest with you, because these birds are yeah. so smart, and I really think people don't under. I don't think people think that. I've heard them say, "Oh, it's just a duck. It's just, you know, they don't know." And I will say this: when I watch other guys from out state hunt, and they're sitting above their cover, and birds are still coming in, I'm like, man, we could never do that here. No we kill birds. <laughs> You know, right? I hate to keep bringing that up, you know, but oh, I know, but it's almost like everybody needs to experience it because, oh my gosh, yeah, I mean, uh, California compared to other states, and not not all, but I mean, some of the states we've hit up in this what in the specific flyway here, it's like, good night, yeah, this is you know, it's a whole different ballgame, oh, dude. Dude, you can get away with a lot more. I mean, and that just goes, you know, like the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, yeah. or location, 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 pressure, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you got to be so fun. Everything I do, and people are going to, you know, what this guy, whatever, dude. <laughs> um, you know, I know it, dude. This guy know it all. I mean, whatever. It's just my just opinions. Yeah. You're... Everything I do is calculated. Yeah. Everything I do is is all for a, for a reason. Every, you know, I'm thinking about what I'm doing the night before on my hunt, how I'm going to set it up, where I'm going to be, you know? Yeah. Everything is for a reason Yeah. that I, that I have out there yeah. and it works for me. You know, people don't take it that serious. That's fine. Totally fine. That is totally coach. Yep. That's just where I'm at. Yeah. That's it. Cause people kill birds all across the state. Doing right. Things. And I like mean, you, we see it. Yep. And we've talked about country. that, Excuse you know, me. we can't like. Yeah. Oh, you're doing it wrong because you're not doing it my way. It's like we've exactly like you said, we've learned that like that's not the right way. And that's what everybody does. Every duck hunter does that though. It's like, oh my goodness. You know, it's like I don't like I try not to do that anymore if I ever have, you know. Right. Just try not yeah, to Yeah, I've gotten away from saying like the right way, because you can kill ducks, hunt up ducks, however. A hundred different uh, ways. Yeah. Way, right. It's just the way I do it. This is the way I do it. <laughs> like and hun- it doesn't always pay off but no yeah you know. true and that's with anything in general though but like what like what one of the things that blows my mind is like divers you know you can sit in a boat with a half tended 
blind that's not really brushed. Don't it's very obvious, and they decoy, and I'm yep. like, okay, <laughs> and that's in California. You know, like you're just sitting there like, wow, mm-hmm. okay, interesting. These ducks either are not that smart or something. I don't know, but it's or weird. they don't get shot up enough to really, you know, that that's a factor. Yeah, really. I was watching know? that guy. I don't know if you watched it, and I can't think of his name right now, but he went to Greenland, I believe. And shot those, um, the, uh, oh my goodness, what is the name of that bird? King Eider. He was shooting King Eiders, and they're just sitting on the bank in the wide open. And I guess supposedly <laughs> yeah. they've never been hunted there by uh, non residents, or if even, re- I don't even know if the residents shoot them, but they went out there and it was just like, yeah, they're sitting right on the bank, not hidden, don't just send up the shotguns, and okay, here comes one, boom. It's like, yeah, hmm. was it, was it Ramsey? No, it actually wasn't. It was another guy that oh, okay. I don't really know that good, but he, I guess, in one season he did the whole forty-one or something. But the dude oh, has wow. a okay. ton of money to be able to do what he did. I was like, "There's you just you'd have to have millions to do the stuff he did because he was going different countries and personal private jets and yeah. Oh yeah, we're never gonna be in that <clears throat> that train. But man, what was yeah, that guy's it's... name? It was a cool. It was cool to watch though. I mean, it was kind of cool, different setting, another country, you know. Right. Whatever, but yep. we'll change the change subject here just a minute. Um, people are going to think we're insane. And I'm sitting here holding in my hand a spinning wing wing from the Avian X spinner wing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm thinking yeah, of yeah. the paint that I'm about to put on this thing. <laughs> oh, you already did yours, right? I did. I mean, was there any yeah, guilt? Was yeah. there any guilt as you're getting ready to spray, or zero guilt? Zero hero. Because <laughs> I go back to all my youngster days of growing up. Hash, hashtag youngster. <laughs> um, you know when we used to run blades. Mm-hmm. You know, back in the day, they were just black and white, black and white, and it's it's really like just the. The shape too. I noticed too with like the shape of the wing, getting getting different effect, you know, rather than like the big teardrop or whatnot mm-hmm. that they're using. Mm-hmm. You know, more of that wing shape that I have on you know those mojos I roll. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it gives out a totally different look, kind of like that look from the Avian. See how that shape's a little different right yeah, there? Yeah, totally. Yep, it gives off a little different holographic, um, not holographic, but type of flash well give so, us your, give us your honest opinion i mean this this is an unbiased you know bill. i can't give out the secrets no Come but i well no i meant your opinion of this these wings specifically on the avian x do you would you rather use like a mojo shaped the teardrop over this just honestly no you know what i'm i'm liking i'm liking the avian wing the you teardrop are. works fine but i'm also but i've also got my certain mojos that have different wings too, as you mm. know, that and you I, like and better probably, right? Yeah, and you if you if you stand back, Titus, and you look at those, and we'll Money. have maybe we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. You'll see kind of like a different different effect, hmm. right? And um, that's kind of what I'm going for, a different effect. <clears throat> yeah. Well, um, I've, well, I've talked what, to you what you that. say different effect, but more so probably more realistic effect. Is what you're really maybe, maybe realistic or just you know everybody's kind of just runs what they run just turn them on and kind of just go with it and size yeah. they don't worry about the size this that, and the other you know we've had conversation mm-hmm. conversation about this at nauseum but um yeah. i do like the shape of those avians those avian wings and and i was not upset about coloring them because it's really just contrast is what you need. Yeah, and it, it, they don't really, they don't really pop. We've talked. They don't really pop with the white and the black and the flash with the way they are right now. Really. No, because it's more or less like a gray and a white. Yes, you know. Because when these things, they so. they were bragging about how fast the wings are spinning, which is great. Yeah. Um, but with that spinning faster, I believe it don't it creates even less of that kind of flash. less of a flash. Yeah. yeah. If you think about Correct. it, the faster something goes, it almost turns into a blur and gray, right? Right. So, exactly. If you're going to have one color there yeah. in a way or just mm-hmm. or two colors. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. Yep. So I would I would do it, dude, and there's no regrets. It's not going to hurt you. Look at everything that 
that I do, right? That is right. kind of like <laughs> against the grain ducking wise mm-hmm. <laughs> with with what I do to my decoys. But success so. can't can't lie though. <laughs> the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> you know? And uh, it's like totally like what opposite of what our, our grand folks and like the old timers kind of uh kind of did or would say. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I just kinda I'm I'm debunking stuff. You know. Right. And again, like I said, you're not just some random dude walking out there trying to change the game. Your years of experience and years of, oh, this wasn't the right way. Let's change this and just fine tuning. That's what I love about it. Is, it to me, it's fun to fine tune. I buy stuff every year new and try this and that. And, and a lot of it I'll throw out. And then some of them I'm like, oh, this is money right here. You know, you're mm-hmm. just fine tuning. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> fine tuning the art. Fun. It is, and and it never gets, and it's constantly kind of evolving, right? So this this sport never gets static, yeah. right? Because you're always looking for an edge. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It's great. Yeah, keeps you motivated like all season long oh, because totally. you know you're constantly thinking about maybe new, you know, I don't know, new ways to set up or whatever it may mm-hmm. be, right? So it's it's, it's a it's a 24-7, 365 sport in my eyes. Totally. You know, that's how I approach it. Yeah. Right. And I'm fortunate, you know, to be able to, I mean, really just be dialed in on one passion. I don't know if I could afford a marriage or a lifestyle if I had, if I was this <laughs> deep into like a big game or something. So it's, it's got my full attention and, uh, it's fun. Oh, it's man. fun. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent agree. Well, I think we're going to kind of end this episode, so I'll let you go, Kevin. I'll All probably right. talk to you later, but thanks for coming on and sharing a little bit of your knowledge with us. You're welcome. Thank All you. Right, man. Talk to you soon. All right, later. Bye. All right, guys, we're going to end the this episode here. Hopefully you guys can pull a couple nuggets from it. Just a quick one. We got some great, great videos coming up again. If you haven't seen that video, episode five, you guys got to go check it out. Let us know your thoughts. Hey, even tell us that you came from the MVM show. It's always great to hear that. And then we got just we got videos stacked, guys, and just great hunts. We've been blessed this season. Things have been going good, and I'm out you know, definitely two, three weeks on videos. So, you know, for those of you that are trying to track us and get the pins, you know, you're, you're going to be a little bit behind when you see these. But uh, that's the way we do it. That's the way we roll. And I appreciate all your guys' support. Again, I'm just I'm just harassing and poking the bear. Um, I know most of you that listen to this are great people, and, and you don't take offense to that. You know who I'm talking about. So, all right, guys. We'll see you on the next one.